Meiosis involves two rounds of division to create haploid daughter cells. Mitosis and meiosis are different in the number of cells produced and the genetic content of those daughter cells. So as we look at this, we have a karyotype. and we look at a human karyotype, we have 22 autosomes and two sex chromosomes. So we have 23 total chromosomes, but they're all paired. So we have 46 total chromosomes, 23 pairs. So we would call this diploid because we have homologous chromosomes. We have two number ones, two number twos, two number threes. And the thing is, we get one of those chromosomes from your father and one from your mother. Now, they're going to have the same traits, but not the exact same genes on the chromosomes. So when we start thinking about division, whether it's mitosis or meiosis, we first have to create sister chromatids. So they go through replication, and you're going to make an exact copy of your chromosome from your father and an exact copy of the chromosomes from your mother. But from there, we call these homologous pairs. Again, we have homologous chromosomes, and we create homologous pairs. The sister chromatids are the replicated identical copies, and the what we have are the homologous pairs, which are what we have from mom and dad. So as we look at this, um, overall, the first thing that needs to happen before cell division can occur is DNA replication, where we create sister chromatids. So in our sister chromatids, we would then go through in meiosis. Again, it's two sets of division. During meiosis one, we separate the homo homologs or the homologous chromosomes. So we first replicate everything, and then we have to separate the homologous chromosomes. In meiosis two, we separate the sister chromatids. So what we end up with are haploid daughter cells. They have half as much. These are no longer diploid. They don't have homologous chromosomes in the daughter cells of meiosis. So if we look at this as in a little bit more detail here, we still have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. In meiosis one, again, what's happening here is we first put these homologous chromosomes together. So what you have from mom and dad, they, a process called synapsis occurs where tetrads are formed and crossing over can occur where you can actually get part of mom's chromosome on dad's chromosome. And you can swap a little bit here. So in prophase, we usually think about the, the nuclear membrane dissolving, the centrioles migrating, spindle fiber setting out. But in meiosis one, what's most important here is that we have this synapsis occurring where we have crossing over. Metas in the middle, the homologous chromosomes line up in the middle. And as a part, the homologous chromosomes get pulled apart. Telophase is two. We have two nuclei now reforming. And instead of cytokinesis, we have interkinesis where we split apart this initial first round of division. But now we have meiosis two. And meiosis two is very similar to what we would consider mitosis. So again, we've already divided the number of chromosomes in half. So we had four chromosomes up here. We're down to two chromosomes down here. And now we got to split the sisters apart. So as we have these sisters, now we just line up the chromosomes. And then we can pull those apart. In anaphase, telophase, we get them back to two nuclei. But again, the daughter cells are all haploid, and they are all genetically unique from one another. So again, mitosis, meiosis, we still begin with replication before we can divide. So we have sister chromatids. However, in mitosis, there is no synapsis. In meiosis, there is this crossing over where you can have pieces of homologous chromosomes being swapped. Okay, we have tetrad formation. There's no tetrad formation in mitosis. As we move on to metaphase, in mitosis, all of the chromosomes line up in the middle. 
in meiosis, we have the homologous chromosomes lining up in the middle, and they independently assort. So we could have on this left side, mom and dad's chromosomes, or on this side, we can, again, we're going to have 23 pairs of these. So how they line up, whether they're on the light, right or the left, has no um, bearing on whether they came from mom or dad. So you're getting this random mix of mom and dad into the daughter cells. The next stage of anaphase, in mitosis, the sister chromatids are getting pulled apart. In meiosis one, we are only pulling apart the homologous chromosomes. So what we end up with here is, again, in telophase, we're starting to have two nuclei reform. And ultimately, in mitosis, we end up with identical daughter cells. They're both diploid as we started with diploid. In meiosis, we just finished meiosis one, where we divided the number of chromosomes in half. We mixed them up and separated the homologous chromosomes. But then through meiosis two, we're going to end up separating the sister chromatids and ending up with identically unique haploid daughter cells. So again, when we think of mitosis, we think of making it twin. We start with a single zygote, and we have to go through lots of mitosis, 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 and differentiation to create uh, a human baby. And then there's lots and lots of mitosis that's occurring throughout a person's life to continue to grow and repair cells that have died. However, in meiosis, we are the whole purpose is to create sex cells. So we take the diploid cells, create them into haploid, unique egg, unique sperm, and then ultimately they can come back in fertilization to create a zygote. But again, meiosis is two rounds of division resulting in haploid daughter cells, and mitosis and meiosis differ in the number of cells produced and the overall genetic content of those cells.